Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmarblog.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about Epson Legacy Papers and printing on Windows 10. So we're going to start with Photoshop, and we'll do a file print. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the correct printer selected. In this case, I'm going to use the P800. And this funny little name that it gives it is because I use the wireless networking setup. If you plug in with the USB, it's not quite so confusing. You make sure that your layout is appropriate for your photo. You want to choose Photoshop Manages Colors. And then you want to make sure the paper profile reflects the type of paper you're going to be printing on. In this case, it doesn't. So what I'm going to go do is choose the correct paper profile. And all this gray and weird stuff that you see happening here, that's because I have all these turned on. That's match print colors, gamut warning, and show paper white. So everything you see in gray are things that are out of gamut. The things, the show paper white tries to simulate how much darker your print will be once printed. I don't find it to be especially helpful. Um, you know, you're on a backlit LCD usually versus printing on paper, so usually the print's a little darker. I've accommodated for that to a way that satisfies me for this photo, but generally your prints are dark because you're used to seeing it on a backlit display, so you need to brighten it up to get brighter prints. So I can clear that out. And then match print colors is what this says. This says do soft proofing. This is what it looks like on my display. This is what it's going to look like using this paper profile. And what that means is that the uh, color gamut of the paper profile is different from the color gamut of your display. So places where you see this gamut warning, it's going to have to do a color substitution. So for those color substitutions, what this is doing is it's showing you what color it's going to substitute. If you like that result, then you're in good shape. If not, then go edit your photo and create some layers that are specific for your print version of your file that reflect your desired colors and brightness. For rendering intent, I usually start with relative color metric. They, some people like perceptual saturation. I haven't heard of very many people use absolute color metric, but basically this one says that when you need to substitute colors, try to be as accurate as possible. This one says when substituting colors, try to do it as what someone might perceive it to be on the screen. And saturation says uh, those substitutions focus it on being more saturated. This just tells you what to do with those areas in the gray here when it tries to figure out how to deal with things that are out of gamut. And then black point compensation, you always want to have this turned on. So I've set up Photoshop. However, that's not really the most important thing. The most important thing to do is actually make sure the printer driver is doing the right thing. And you do that by setting print settings. So it's always a two phase approach. One, you need to set your settings appropriately in the software you're using. And also you need to set things, set your settings properly in the Epson printer driver for Windows. So if I click printer settings, then sometimes we can create our own presets that make it really helpful for us. But I'm going to go through and do everything manually here so you can see how I typically do it. So Epson says that we should be using Photo Paper Luster as our desired paper media type for the two legacy papers that use photo black inks. What this does is it tells how much ink, you know, what the platen gap should be used, uh, set to, and essentially the characteristics of the paper, not the color of the paper. We set that back in Photoshop with the paper profile. So this just basically says, okay, this is how thick the paper is and how to handle it. It's actually a little bit thicker than this, but it works. Platen gap's plenty fine for that. When I do that for this particular driver, it says ink will be photo black ink. Some printer drivers will, uh, by Epson, will let you actually select the ink that you use, whether it's photo black or matte black. This one chooses it based on the color that you chose, or the paper uh, media type that you chose. Um, I want to do a color one. I always go in here and choose max quality. That sets it to Super Photo 2880 by 1440. This is critically important for mode. You want to make sure this is set to off. If this is set to anything else, that means Photoshop will do color management as well as the printer driver will do color management. So you have two color management adjustments that override each other. And so you end up with horrible color prints. So you never, ever, ever want to have both of these on. When we do our example of advanced black and white, you'll see how we use this and do Photoshop differently. But in this particular case, because we've chosen a paper profile, this must be off to no color adjustment. 
for our source for this particular paper we're able to use sheet paper I'm going to do a letter size and the other things that I can sometimes come in here and do I'll choose reduce and large sometimes in this particular case I'm not I want to print it hundred percent and then this optimize enlargement I'll always leave on so I'll choose OK and this the I usually do a screenshot of these two for my print log just to make sure I remember how I printed a particular file but we'll go ahead and hit OK and you notice something happened here it went into the wrong orientation again the reason for that was when I was in this section here for page layout these got out of sync and that happens sometimes so it's really important to make sure that they're in sync so I needed to choose landscape hit OK and notice it corrected in here so there's com communication between the driver and Photoshop but in some cases it gets it wrong or things just fail so this preview is really important to show you what may happen and so make sure that you're paying attention to what's happening here and that you know things that are happening in the printer driver especially lay uh, orientation reflect what you see in here so I always center my prints and you can scale them the scaling is very good however if you scale that will impact your sharpening um, quality and your overall results so when possible I avoid any scaling and just do my scaling in advance um, and I create a special file for a PSD specifically for each print size and scale it to exactly the way I want it do my sharpening and then print so I can hit print and I'll be done now I don't need to do that today because I've already printed this one but this is just an example so next up we're gonna try Lightroom now for Lightroom it gets to be very different and I arguably more complicated actually I'm not uh, not a big fan of printing in Lightroom because of all the things that are required so I generally use the maximize size template for the photo or photos that I want to print there's this option up here called rotate to fit and that just helps you deal with um, any problems with landscape versus um, portrait to make sure that you don't end up one where your print is in one orientation and your image is set to the other and the print comes out horrible because it was rotated the wrong way. Lightroom does a good job of just getting that right so you don't have that problem we almost had in Photoshop. So next up we have our print resolution. Um, for Epson printers I usually choose that to be 360. The default 240 is fine but I just generally do 360. I've personally sharpened this file the way that I want it so I don't do any print sharpening. Had I just chosen a regular image, then I would generally do uh, print sharpening, and I usually go to standard or high actually for that. Remember, what prints, what looks nice on the screen is one thing. What looks like for prints is totally different. Generally, our our printers are higher resolution than the screens, unless you have a 4K display. You know, the sharpening on screen would look sort of bad. That might actually turn out to be perfect for a print. So sometimes a little over sharpening for screen it can be okay. In this particular case, we don't want to do Manage by Printer. We want to actually choose a paper profile. And so here's the paper profile I want to choose. However, let's pretend that I didn't have it. So if I were to choose profiles, what I do is I scroll through this list and locate the correct one for my printer. And there's a whole lot to choose from because I have a whole lot of printers. However, you just want to find the printer name and the type of paper you're looking for. The, this is the file name on disk, and this is um, the file name of the, or the friendly name, as they call it, um, of the paper profile that you want to use. Any items that are checked in this list will appear back in there, so I can choose two of these other leg legacy papers, hit OK, and you'll see they'll now show up in the list. I want to choose the appropriate one. I can scroll this out to make sure I can see the whole name and then again rendering intent now in Lightroom you only get two choices and they're the most popular perceptual and relative again I choose relative 99.9% .9 of the time some people prefer perceptual it's a personal preference print both pick the one you like and you'll kind of get your get some ideas oftentimes I find that they're so close it's impossible to tell the difference I'm not going to make any adjustments but if you wanted to do some print only adjustments Lightroom is very friendly and that allows you to do some brightness and contrast that are just specific to printing and won't impact 
the file in, in the develop module at all. So if you were to export the file, it wouldn't make a difference. Now, to get things right in Photoshop, it can be, or Lightroom, it can be kind of difficult because first thing we have to do is come over to the left side, do page setup. For page setup, you see that I have the wrong printer selected. So I need to choose my correct printer. I need to make sure that I have the correct paper size, the correct source, the correct orientation. In this case, I actually do choose portrait because you notice how Lightroom always orients it for portrait orientation. And then basically come through here and do the same thing again. So I want to choose luster. I want to choose max quality. I want to turn off. This is critically important. Turn off color management. I'm going to use the sheet feeder. It's totally fine for this type of paper. Letter size. In here, make sure it's portrait. And we're good to go. So if I've done everything properly, all this is set properly, I can hit print. Uh, if at any point I want to double check, come over here, printer, do the same thing. Make sure it's all right. Hit print. Now these values get saved. I think these values are temporary, so that's sort of the difference between those. So just make sure, I always use page setup as my um, printer settings, make sure I get things right, and then I hit print. So that's Photoshop and Lightroom on Windows 10. I hope you appreciated this, and uh, check out my full review and more information on ronmarkblog.com, including my printing series. Thanks a lot. Bye.